Hello. Today's lesson is the Princess Line Bodice. The Princess Line Bodice is a fitted waist that uses seaming to make the garment fit to the form rather than darts. When the seam follows the Princess Line of the form, the bodice will closely resemble the basic bodice with shoulder dart and waistline dart. However, the princess line can originate at any point above the apex and terminate at any point below the apex. This makes it a particularly good bodice for designing and being creative. Illustrated is a dress with the basic princess line. Shown here is the mid armhole princess line. This is a more stylized version of the same line. When the princess line begins at any point other than the basic line, the bodice will closely resemble the dart manipulation bodice. The line, wherever it originates, should come and pass across the apex or very close to it. If it doesn't, you will find that a dart is needed in the apex area to make the bodice fit. The back of the bodice, princess line, should closely resemble the front line so that there is a relationship between the two. The bodice I'm going to do for you is the basic bodice that closely follows the shape of the line on the form. We will always need to tape the line on the form in order to know exactly what size each panel will be. If the line follows the shape of the princess line, you would have two panels for front and two panels for back. A center front panel, a side front panel, a side back panel, and a center back panel. Since muslin will be needed for all of the pieces, and since there is a strong relationship between the center panel and the side panels, it is a very good method to plan both panels at the same time and then to separate the muslin. We will need to know how big a piece of muslin we will need for both pieces, both sides of the waist. It's, you usually plan to measure the widest area of each panel to determine how much muslin you will need. The center panel, if it follows the princess line, is normally widest up in the neckline area and would be measured in that area, plus an amount of fabric for draping, which in the case of the center panel is three inches. The side panel, again to be measured at the widest area, is generally in the apex area from side seam to apex, plus draping muslin, which is four inches. A similar approach is taken in the back. The widest area for the center panel plus three inches, the widest area for the side panel, plus four inches. All of those numbers added together would mean that the center panel is five plus three inches, the side panel was six plus four inches, which would give me a need for a piece of muslin of this size for the front. The muslin has been torn, blocked, and pressed to the needed size. I would then determine how much muslin I would need for the front, measure over for it, and separate the muslin. The muslin has a center line, which is center front, and an apex line which falls in exactly the same place as it did for the basic bodice. My front panel, center front panel, needs to be eight inches. I can therefore divide the muslin by 
drawing a line down and cutting the muslin apart. center panel is prepared. The side panel will need a line, a grain line, lengthwise grain line, down the center of the panel, fold it in half to divide it, and then draw in a lengthwise grain for draping. That prepares the front pieces. The approach would be the same for the back. We would determine how much was measured plus three inches for the back. Five inches plus three would be eight. Cross mark and separate the muslin in a similar fashion. Lengthwise grain line is also needed down the back side panel, which is drawn in at this time. The back panels are prepared. This becomes center back. This becomes center front. Now, if I were planning a muslin that was shaped other than the basic, of course I would be measuring the widest area from the new shaping, meaning the center panel <coughs> would now be as wide as from armhole to neckline. The side panel would remain almost the same. If I were doing a muslin that shaped from center front over apex, the center panel would become much smaller and the side panel would become much larger. Each muslin would require a separate measurement and a separate determination. The form, of course, will be taped for the basic, since that's the one I am planning to do. It's a good idea to anchor the tape. I'm placing the tape so that one edge of it is resting on the princess line seam. That's important so that there is a very definite place for marking the seam when I get to that point. The tape is called the style line, and the style line is a line that is negotiable. It will change as the styling of the bodice changes. I'm sinking pins in the tape to secure it so that when I drape, the pins will be perfectly flat and not get in the way of the draping. But the line, which is very important, will not shift from the basic that I am planning. very important that the pins be perfectly flat against the form. Otherwise, you will get a distorted line when you drape. Okay. The back has been taped to uh, accommodate the back line and to have its relationship to the front. In beginning to drape, we will begin with the center panel. It has a lengthwise grain. It has a crosswise grain at the apex. And as always in planning to drape, you begin by folding back the one inch extension so that the center front of the bodice will rest directly on the center front of the form.
as with the basic bodices, we will begin with a place that you can identify on the muslin and a place that you can identify on the form. That place, as on the basic bodice, continues to be the apex. At the apex, I will place a pin directly on the apex line with one pin going up and one pin going down so that as I work the muslin up and work the muslin down, the muslin does not shift and I don't lose the apex. Being sure that the muslin is resting directly on center front, I'm going to look at the muslin, follow the grain up for about an inch and a half from the apex, keeping it flat to the form, and then follow that straight grain, that straight cross grain, over to center front and pin, thus establishing the grain line above the apex. I'll follow the same method below the curve of the breast, below the apex, pin across, find center front and apex, straight across, straight grain again, thus forming the muslin needed so that when the garment is cut on the fold, it will go from apex to apex easily. Center front grain is maintained. I can smooth down to the waistline and pin center front to a waistline intersection and smooth up and pin up to neckline center front intersection. The muslin is now established on the form and the procedure is the same as for a basic, that is that the neckline will have to be draped in order to bring the muslin, muslin around to the shoulder neckline intersection. One inch up from the neckline center front intersection, I will slash across for one inch. Easy to determine because there is a one inch fold back. And then cut straight up taking out a rectangular piece of fabric. That will release the fabric sufficiently so that I can crease the neckline and get a sense of how far down I can slash in order to make the muslin lay perfectly flat. Into the diagonal corner, I'm slashing up to that crease line. The second slash one inch away from the first, not quite as deep, and the third one, again, not quite as deep as the first. Because as the muslin releases, the slashes will come down. A Little more if necessary. Smooth the muslin up around the neckline and pin at the shoulder neckline intersection, which you can feel with your finger, and then recrease the neckline. The muslin will be smoothed with the grain over the shoulder. If it looks as if it needs another slash, it can have another slash. Smooth with the grain over the shoulder and pin, establishing the upper part of the muslin. We'll then turn to the waistline. For the waistline area, again, I will need to slash in order to make the muslin lie flat against the figure. And to pin at the waistline, princess line intersection, and check to see that there aren't any crosswise pulls, that the muslin is laying nice and flat, and if necessary, slash again to make sure the muslin is nice and flat. We'll put some pins to secure the muslin beyond the princess line. And at this point, the front of the muslin center panel has been draped and it's ready to be marked. The markings should begin at the neckline, following the crease, cross mark center front neckline intersection. Dot the neckline on the crease about every half inch until you come to shoulder neckline intersection 
where you will place a cross mark. Feel across the shoulder. Do not put any marks on the shoulder seam, but feel across. And remember, we rested the tape right up next to the princess line seam, and therefore I will mark a cross mark at the shoulder princess line intersection and dot the princess line down following the tape. Down to the apex and at the apex a cross mark. I will dot the princess line down to the waistline, center of the tape, and cross mark. It is really not necessary to put any marks on the waistline at this time because eventually the waistline will be a straight grain from princess line seam to center front. Once the muslin has been marked, it can be removed from the form. It will be necessary to true each panel as we complete them. The first line that can be trued is the neckline. It is done with a French curve, following the dots from center front up to shoulder. However, the center front cross mark should be squared for one quarter of an inch, ensuring a nice continuous line when the muslin is cut on a fold. And then to follow the dots from the center front up being sure that all the slashes are nicely closed to their original shape. That forms a nice neckline. As with all basic muslins, the neckline of the form is somewhat high and does not allow for a comfortable fit. So the neckline will be dropped, depending upon the styling, minimally one quarter of an inch, but certainly more if the styling calls for it. In order to true the neckline so that it will fit nicely, closely at the shoulder, but comfortably at center front, the curve goes back to the natural neckline and then drops to the new squared center front line with no change happening at the shoulder neckline intersection, but only a drop at center front. The neckline should be trued at this time, including seam allowance, which is one half inch from the lowered neckline. Measured carefully and trimmed. It's a good idea to do this at the time that you true the neckline so that you know the neckline is complete and does not have to be dealt with again. The next line to be trued will be the princess line. The princess line will take whatever shape ruler is needed to accommodate the dots of the line. That could be, depending upon the styling, um, hip curve, a French curve, a straight ruler. Uh, it's important to follow the dots as closely as possible. It's usually not possible to draw the entire line above the apex and below the apex all at once. Generally, you must draw the line above the apex and then accommodate the line below the apex. Now, the line below the apex was dotted so that it fits very close to the body. That is a perfectly acceptable line depending upon the styling that is planned for the garment. It does give a close body fit. Generally speaking, if you are making daytime clothes with an easy fit and you're planning to follow the general shapes that we've been doing with the darts, 
The line from the apex can be drawn with a ruler similar to the basic waist dart. It's interesting to see the dots and how they would shape in if we were making a tight fitted bodice. The dots are somewhat in from the basic line, therefore showing that the line gives you a little bit of ease through the middle or the midriff area of the bodice, which is fine for uh, normal everyday fitting clothes, probably would not do for um, an evening gown or a leotard. Okay. At this time, we'll measure half inch for seam allowance. This line is a style line. Therefore, half inch of seam allowance is sufficient. We don't make adjustments in fit on style lines. It's not good practice. Therefore, half inch of seam allowance is sufficient for sewing the seam and is easier to work with on this shaped bodice than larger seam allowance. I have not trued the shoulder seam. The reason for that is that at this time, what we have is half of a shoulder seam. You don't have the entire shoulder seam. And since a line is never trued until the whole line is completed, we will not true the shoulder seam until the side piece has been draped and we have the rest of it. That same principle would apply to uh, an armhole. If the princess line were to come from the armhole down over the apex, then the armhole would not be trued. Or the neckline, if the line were coming from the neckline, that would not be trued until the entire line had been completed. We'll put the center front panel back on the form exactly the way it was draped. Center front neckline to center front of the form, pin above the apex, pin waistline, and below the apex, neckline, shoulder intersection, princess line, and then because once the line on the center panel has been trued, the tape line no longer has any meaning. Actually, the tape line could be removed at this point because the side panel will be draped over the trued princess line. It's important to anchor the princess line to the form in the seam allowance so that you can drape over the line completed. We also don't want the line to shift as the draping is done, so it's important to get it nice and flat to the form with the pins not protruding. And we are then ready to approach the side panel. The side panel prepared with a grain line down the center, which is similar to the guide line that we placed on the first basic. It falls in approximately the same place, about halfway between the apex and the side seam. And the apex line, which originally was one line with the center front, should be placed so that it also lines up perfectly with the center front apex line. And many of the same principles 
that you learned on the first basic are applicable to this second or this princess line basic. We are looking for the grain line running straight from apex to side seam with ease allowed in the center. That's very important. You want to make sure that the muslin fits softly and easily to the form, particularly for the princess line bodice. Because each time you sew a seam, the bodice will tend to get a little smaller. So planning for ease in this area is doubly important for the princess line bodice. We're looking for the same kind of boxy shape that was happening with the first basics. And the best way to know if you've got the boxy shape and the best way to know if the grain line of the apex and the grain line that's going up and down are perfectly squared is to stand back and look at it. See if you see a nice squared line, apex and down. Okay. The line, apex line, should line up absolutely perfectly with the apex line of the center panel. Side seam pinned softly in place. And then once you feel that the line has been well placed, you can put pins in going up and down so that the muslin is secured. And as you work it, it will not shift. We'll work with the bottom part first. And what we want to do is very much the same thing we did with the basic bodice and the guideline. The line will be brought down perfectly straight as it hangs to the waistline. And again, it should fall approximately halfway between the princess line and the side seam. It's not a hard and fast rule, but it is in that general area. And then picked up with a small pinch of ease and pinned to the form. In order to bring the muslin to the side seam and back and over to the waistline at the center front panel, the muslin must be slashed to within approximately a quarter of an inch of the middle of the waistline tape. The muslin then can be brought over to the princess line on the center panel and then brought to the side seam. Muslin is smoothed over the center panel. And a little bit of ease will fall in the apex area. It will form there, and it is important. It should not be ignored or try to drape out. It is necessary for the shaping of the bodice. The grain line above the apex now will be smoothed over the armhole, similar to the way we smooth for the shoulder dart. Smooth it and lay it down flat against the form, being sure that no extra fullness is forming over the armhole. That's a very important point. And again, you're always smoothing with the grain. We'll pin the muslin in the shoulder area, smooth over, the center panel, and have the muslin fit nice and flat. And you see that there is some fullness forming over the apex. We'll pin it then at the side seam arm plate intersection. And another pin to hold the muslin flat at the back of the shoulder. This muslin can be slashed in this area to get it nice and flat, since we are not working with this at all. As long as we stay inside the princess line, we don't have to worry about that slashing. The important thing is that the muslin fit close to the body that the grain lines be well placed and that there be no diagonal pulls 
and slash it again if necessary to release. The muslin will then be marked starting at the princess line shoulder intersection, cross mark, following the trude line, dot down to the apex, at the apex, a cross mark. We'll dot immediately below and stop because that line will also be a straight line to match the line drawn on the center panel. Princess line is marked. We'll proceed to the waistline. Cross mark as for the center panel, leaving no marks between about an inch below the apex and the waistline. That will be a straight line drawn with a ruler. One dot halfway between the princess line and the guideline. Another dot halfway between the guideline and the side seam. And a cross mark at the side seam waistline intersection. Still following through on the basics, there will be no marks on the side seam and the next mark will occur at the side seam arm plate intersection. We're marking the far side of the seam and creasing the plate. I'm going to return to the top of the muslin and the shoulder seam and the ridge. Cross mark the shoulder seam and the ridge and dot the ridge down to approximately the screw mark. Below the screw mark, there will be dashes. At one place, the screw mark area, there will be a dot and a dash. The muslin can then be removed from the form. We're going to need both pieces in order to complete the bodice, so I'm going to remove the side piece first and then take out all those pins that were anchored, anchoring the center panel to the form. Remove them before I try to remove the muslin so that it doesn't tear or pull the grain out of shape. Okay, And both pieces are now flat on the table ready for truing. We'll begin with the princess line and it will probably take a similar curve to the line that was drawn on the center panel. Now the important thing to remember here is that of course you want to hit all of the dots possible but if you find that there's one out not quite making it into the line. The line should be blended. Don't try for a, a dot that doesn't conform with the others, but true only the ones that are within the range of the curve. Okay? The bottom part will be drawn from a little below, approximately a half inch below the apex mark and it will be a straight line matching the straight line of the center piece and the little bit in the middle that is apex area will be completed with a curve because the body is a curve and therefore the line should follow the curved shape of the body. There is not a point on the body. There should not be a point on the muslin. Again, we'll give it one half inch of seam allowance because it's the other part of the style line and it doesn't need to be adjusted for fit. The style line will stay the same regardless of what happens for the fit. 
and trim away the excess muslin. And the bodice will need to be assembled, the center panel and the side panel, before any more truing is done. Now, if you look at the bodice in its present state, you can see the relationship between the basic bodice with the shoulder dart and waistline dart and the princess bodice that is classically drawn on the princess line. They are very similar in shape. Now, the assembling of the bodice will require that some cross marks be placed on the center panel, approximately two inches above the apex line we'll put a cross mark and two inches below the apex line we'll put a cross mark. That is the area in which the fullness that appeared at the apex as we were draping will be distributed. Best way to handle this now is to slash the center panel right at the apex line and turn the seam allowance of the center panel under, creasing it. Now, depending upon the shape of the line, you may or may not have to um, slash that line. With the classic princess, one slash at the apex is normally sufficient. Now, I'm going to pin, starting at the shoulder princess line cross mark, down to the cross mark that I just placed above the apex, pinning and keeping the muslin with the two lines perfectly aligned, picking up just the smallest amount on the edge of the fold. Muslin should fit flat and perfectly together at this point on the classic princess neither one stretching more or less. At the apex line, I will stop and transfer that cross mark to the side panel. I now have cross mark on center panel and on side panel. And stop the pinning exactly at that point. And begin the pinning now at the waistline area, starting by creasing the center panel and cupping the muslin somewhat the way we have always done for darts. I will pin the waistline, matching the two lines exactly together, up to the cross mark again. And again, as with the basic muslin, if it's well draped, carefully draped, you really don't need an awful lot of pins. Now that leaves some fabric that is excess on the side panel. That excess fabric was the ease over the apex and matching up the apex, I will distribute the ease under the center panel. Normally, when you sew a garment with that ease, you would run a shirring stitch up from the cross mark below the waistline up to up below the apex up to the cross mark above the apex. And of course the apex cross mark below should be transferred to the side panel as well. Now depending upon the shape of the body there will be more or less ease. The larger the breast the more the ease. The flatter the figure, the less the ease. And it's a good idea to put your fingers underneath to accommodate that ease. And there's the shaping. And you can see the shaping having happened right now in on the muslin. The shaping of the body is already in the muslin. We'll get it as flat as we can in order to true the side seam.
I'll true the side seam joining the waistline cross mark to the underarm plate side seam cross mark at the plate which is called tight body line. We can plan for a garment with a sleeve or without a sleeve. With a sleeve we would come down one inch and cross mark. Measure out from that cross mark one half inch dot and make another cross mark and join the waistline to the lowered extended mark for an extended line. If the garment were to be sleeveless, the amount would be half that, one half inch down and one quarter out. Having now placed the lowered extended cross mark, I can true the armhole. Curve goes lowered extended mark, halfway between the dot and the dash, up to the shoulder ridge intersection. Three places for placing the curve. And draw in the armhole. Front armhole is normally drawn in one complete line of curve. We'll trim, leaving approximately an inch and a half of seam allowance not trimming away the mark for the tight body line plate intersection. We'll need it when we drape the back. The last part of the bodice is to true shoulder seam and give it a one inch seam allowance. It is a straight line joining the neckline shoulder intersection to the ridge shoulder intersection and trim away the excess muslin. The basic princess line bodice normally has a balanced side seam. Therefore, I'm not going to trim any part of the side seam away in preparation for balancing it with the back side seam once it is draped. The muslin then will be returned to the form in preparation for draping the back. The natural neckline to the natural neckline. Pin it above the apex. Pin the waistline. Pin below the apex. And pin the shoulder neckline intersection in place the shoulder ridge in place, the side seam in place, pinch of ease, and waistline side seam intersection. It should fit comfortably across so that the tight body line rests immediately behind the side seam of the form. It should not have to be, be pulled over to fit. It should fit just as it fits against the body without any pulls at all. If you find after you've pinned the muslin back on the figure that there is an excess of fullness in the apex area, you can remove the pins above and below the apex and redistribute the fullness so that it falls nicely and there is not a great deal of fullness in one area. After doing that, the cross marks can be remarked in red and that correction will help to make the muslin fit nicer and look well. The next step would be to anchor the shoulder seam over the shoulder seam of the form, sinking the pins into the cover of the form so that it is, they are nice and flat in preparation for draping the back muslin.
that completes the front.